Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway. And you know the rules, folks. If we're talking to you, either there's really bad news or there's really good news. And I don't think we've ever come to you with really bad news. And we're back with some more really good news for you because K State finally has their first commit of the 2025 class. Maybe it's unfair of me to use the word finally there, but I think in terms of how people were waiting and ready for it, they feel like, oh, okay. The seal has been broken. K-State has somebody in the class, and it's one of the bigger positions every year in your class is what everybody's really going to key in on. K-State has their quarterback in 2025 and Dylan Duff. So, Drew, uh, give us some some basic info on the quarterback from St. Louis. Uh, so some basic info. Uh, what's crazy about Dylan Duff, this was his first year starting as a high school quarterback. So he's still pretty new to starting and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, what's also interesting is that this is a big, huge win for Matt Wells. Matt Wells has been on the job for six weeks and comes and finds Dylan Duff. And that says that that's my man. And he's the only quarterback that Matt Wells offered since he's been on the job and K-State comes in and kind of, if you're a, a Missouri fan, you're wondering what, what the heck just happened? Like K-State comes in and sneaks Dylan Duff out of Missouri where it's probably a head to head win for K-State over Missouri uh, with Duke in there as well. And he was starting to get a lot of offers and attention uh, during the, the last co- uh, contact period as well. So it, it's, it really just shows that Matt Wells really wanted to hit the ground running and knock it out of the park with his first QB. Yeah, well, it's interesting to, to see because, I mean, I think immediately people go and that's the, the stuff that hits you in the face. You're like, okay, well, how many stars does he have? Uh, not not everybody up to date on that yet for him, uh, but widely regarded as, as a pretty solid three-star. But really, as people, I think, around K-State have – become a little bit more accustomed to doing it's okay d- dig deeper what what do the offers look like well i think if my math was right he's got nine power four offers good uh, save yeah yeah he's 2025 no longer is there a power five for dylan duff to have to worry about so he's got nine power four offers and like you said missouri and k-state up there uh duke in the mix but also like the others just so people are aware nebraska ucf northwestern indiana minnesota and georgia tech so really schools from all over the place and of varying levels, but there's clear that there's talent there and these people have evaluated it. And like you said, it's his first year as a starting quarterback. There's probably some excitement to what you can do with how raw he might still be. Yeah. And I'd also add rankings at this stage don't really matter as much as they do near the end. I mean, we saw Gus Hawkins, steady rise up to eventually being uh, the number 52 player in the country and the on three rankings where I think that he was like an 86, 87 when he initially committed. So you'll see as the summer hits and he could, po- he could possibly go to more national events um, you'll see him just with his senior tape that he could potentially go up. And I mean, not everybody even has uh, 2025 rankings out yet, too, which is another factor that plays into it. Yeah, the, there's there's a lot that goes down into the kind of the the vanity type stuff that goes with the the recruiting game. But you talked about, hey, Matt Wells comes in, he gets this, he helps get this done for K State. Uh, give a little bit more background of what you have on the Dylan Duff relationship with K-State and kind of the work that Matt Wells and others on staff did to get him to come to K-State, which, like you said, he's got a Missouri offer, and you look at what Missouri has done, a lot of their success recently has been off the back of the fact that they've done really well in St. Louis and certainly on the, the Missouri side of Kansas City. So the two big metro areas in their state they've done well in, how is K-State able to come in here and get Dylan Duff? So Matt Wells, first off, just hit the ground running as soon as he was hired. I mean, we saw Matt Wells pretty much everywhere, Oklahoma, Missouri, and he tried to hit all of the high schools that he could. And really it was kind of fun to see where he was because – K-State was at a point where they needed to probably reset the recruiting board. And then Alex Nancy comes off the board and goes to Iowa State. So the recruiting board at at QB had to really shuffle again. And 
it was Chris Kleiman, Matthew Middleton, and Matt Wells all in St. Louis uh, watching Dylan Duff throw. And that's what got him the offer during the contact period. It's actually uh, Kleiman's second time uh, over this calendar year seeing Dylan Duff throw. So the re- the relationship was there. And I think that the familiarity with Chris Kleiman, as well as knowing what Matt Wells was about, and I know that those two, those two hit it off right away and had a good relationship. And you could just see how much that case date uh, meant to Dylan Duff. I mean, Dylan Duff had his offer for probably like eight, nine days and immediately schedules a visit to K-State. And then now he's he is committed. So you got to see more of like it was a behind the scenes and in the shadows kind of recruitment because this is something that was kind of a long time coming, but nobody really knew about it. Well, in terms of, of what K-State is getting here, and I know, like you said, there's there's not a ton out there on Duff, but what is your knowledge of, of his play style and what the expectation would be for him as a player when he gets to K-State? So right now, he he's pretty raw still, but you could see that he has an easy throwing motion. Like I, I wrote down, because I, I watched uh, some of his tape earlier uh, in the day, I said that the ball just kind of looks different coming out of his hand because it just jumps because he doesn't have great footwork I would say but when he but he has just easy arm strength is probably the best way to describe him Uh, he's a really good athlete he's a really good uh, basketball player he had over 500 rushing yards this season with eight touchdowns to go along with his 15 passing touchdowns and 1800 yards in the air he He's pretty good under pressure and can make all the throws off platform, which is honestly like right now and where football is going. That's something that you really need to have in your tool bag as a quarterback. Uh, The interesting thing for me is you have uh, Dylan Duff, Avery Johnson, Blake Barnett all in the same quarterback room. I mean, that's those are three really, really good athletes. Yeah, well, so I was going to save this for for the end because I've got one other thing in here uh, in regards to how this plays for you know the the rest of the the class of twenty twenty five. But let's just dive into it now because he, he will get to K State and like you said, it will be Avery Johnson, Blake Barnett, Dylan Duff. What is the timeline expectation then? And and we've talked about this on other shows where recruiting's been a subject, but this is kind of a really important quarterback class yes. for K State because. You think, okay, Avery Johnson, he's your quarterback for 24 and 25. Maybe if you're lucky, you have him in 26. But, look, everybody knows the talent that is there. There's a there's a chance that that's not the case. And as we know, and, like, we don't know what Blake Barnett will be thinking, but, like, there's always this you want to get on the field and you want to be able to also have two viable options already in-house when Avery Johnson does move on. So what does that timeline look like for Dylan Duff to be the starting quarterback at K-State? The the timeline is tricky because there there's a scenario where Dylan Duff is the next quarterback after Avery Johnson, but I, I think that it's equally as likely that Blake Barnett could be the quarterback after Avery Johnson. So it's it'll really come down to who can get who can get further ahead of the other one because to be honest, there isn't a whole lot that's uh, dissimilar between Duff and Barnett outside of Barnett being uh, about like 40 pounds heavier uh, because B- B- Blake Barnett's just a tank at quarterback. So you're getting a player that's pretty similar. So it'll come down to who can control the playbook, who can control the locker room. And, and, and I mean, we're in this era of college football where it, it, it depends on who stays because I mean, there, there's a scenario where, Blake Barnett could eventually could leave if things don't go how he foresees it or Dylan Duff could leave if things don't go how he foresees it. So it, it's very interesting and especially like quarterback talking about timelines because in this era of college football, it, quarterback transfer is the, the number one position. Well, cause you know, only one guy can, can be on the field. You, you have all these other guys that come in and, you know, there, there are going to be other members of the 2025 class that we could talk about. Okay, what's their timeline to see the field? We really don't know. It, it could be, okay, they're, they're not doing anything until they're a redshirt sophomore or 
They could be Jace Brown and they're, you know, the the number one guy at their position by the end of their true freshman year. You, you just don't know. But quarterback, when you have a guy in place, you do tend to know. So it'll be interesting when he does get to K-State and, and how things work out from there. The last thing on Dylan Duff, as he is the first commit of the 2025 class, and you talked about, you mentioned Gus Hawkins earlier. He was the first commit of the 2024 class. He rose up the ranks and all that. And we saw each guy that kind of came into that class. They they carried the load and they talked to the other guys and got them on board. So how impactful is it for K-State not only to get their first commit, but that it's the quarterback and how can he kind of help recruit the other guys, especially, you know, some of the big names out there like Lincoln Cure, uh, who's who's a big tight end tar- target. I was about to say, with with him being the quarterback, it makes it, I think, an even more interesting dynamic of how does this play out because you can pitch to Lincoln Cure or Desan Brame or Bryson Hayes or any of your other skill position targets. Like, hey, this is your quarterback that's going to be in, in the class with you. Like, I am your guy. I, I will be the one getting you the ball. So it, that will be very interesting to follow. Um, and then another like fun fact in this kind of recruitment that is interesting is that uh, K State is going after uh, his teammate, who's a linebacker, Jason King, as well. So you see kind of how that could play out. And and I mean, there's a handful of offensive linemen that K State is right in the thick of for, and he could be the one being like, "Hey, do do you want to block for me?" Yeah, the, the, there's there's a lot of lot of possibilities there, and we've seen over the last couple of years that the the players themselves, once they're bought in, how they are able to talk to other guys and and kind of get the momentum flowing there. It's important. Uh, what what is the the overall expectation then uh, for for Dylan Duff and and what this commitment means for K State? I think for K State, the main thing that it means is that you got your quarterback for the class because you always need to take one. And this could be something that gets the ball rolling and the snowball effect could come because Casey, it's on a doorstep for a lot of different uh, prospects. So sometimes it just takes one and then you feel like you can really start reining them in. And the spring I think will be a big deal with uh, spring football and visits that happen during the spring. So this could end up being a snowball effect. I think it'll be interesting to see uh, where things go because we are we, we're getting to that time now where you know this is the first one and guys guys will will start to get more of them they'll start to pick up a little bit more it's not going to be such a, a dry period so a good way to start it for K State in their 2025 class they get a quarterback that obviously they really wanted I I always think it's a good sign when you get your quarterback earlier on uh, yes. in the process because you know if you're waiting until <laughs> probably like October and you get your quarterback, you're like, okay, so this guy was what, like 12th on your list of dudes that you wanted. Uh, <laughs> obviously Dylan Duff was pretty high on K-State's list and they were able to get him out of some really, uh, really top contenders there. High enough up on their list that once they offered him, they didn't want to offer anybody else at quarterback. Which can be a bold strategy <laughs> if, uh, if he doesn't want to come. But fortunately enough for K-State, Dylan Duff is on board. First commit of the 2025 class. You can get more information on Duff's commitment over at kstateonline.com. So head over there, get all the coverage you need from Drew and DY on that. You can find it at, at on three. And also, I'm sure, uh, plenty of takes to be thrown around over on the message boards as well. And you get that as well when you're a member of K-State Online. So, That'll do it for Drew Galloway. I am Mason Vo. Thank you for watching K-State Online.